turn, Fistrum. Fistrum. Not now, Spellbush. Can't you see I'm busy? It's your turn, Fistrum. I'd really rather not. I never was much good at games. This is hardly a game, Fistrum. It's extremely serious. So is this. I want to finish the picture that Emily started. I want to give her a surprise. <laughs> well, you'll do that all right, Fistrum. You've painted that mushroom red. And you've gone over a line. Where? There. And there. You've done it twice. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be furious. Um, this way, Fistrum. Do I have to spell bush? Excellent. Excellent, Mr. and Mrs. Fotheringham. Step up straight. Don't finish it. Stop picking your nose. Now, if you could just uh, compose yourself, and if you and your dear children could assume the expressions you would wish to see preserved for all time by the art of the photographic camera. In your own time, photographer, we are composed for the taking. Right, quite still, everyone. Now. One, two, three, four, five. There. Not too painful, was it? Your wife has quite a way with children, Mr. Fosteringham. Uh, uh, You'll spare the rod and spoil the child, sir. Spare the rod and spoil the child. Don't fidget. Sorry. Oh, excuse me for a moment. Yes, Sorry to bother you, sir, while you're photographicalising. Only I was wondering whether you'd care for me to take Master Ernest and Miss Emily out for the afternoon. Aren't they busy with their lessons, Billy? Oh, looks no, sir. They've finished them. And I'll finish my chores too, sir. And that's the sleeping in the dustbin and the bees and that. And seeing as our cook has no need for me now, but... By all means, but I'm sure they'll be delighted. Oh, thanks ever so, sir. Oh, and I've brung your wall in what you painted from the garden. Oh. It's dry now. Thank you, Millie. Shall I bring it in? Thank you, Millie. I'll open the door for you. <laughs> Thank you, Millie. Now, uh, where shall I send the... Uh... Hello, where's Mrs. Fotheringham? Are you all right, madam? I'm perfectly all right, I assure you, sir. Why are you examining my wall? Is there something wrong with it? Your wall? Exactly, sir. You must have it attempted to at once. Why, what's wrong with it? Wallworm. Wallworm? Surely not. I'm an expert on the subject, sir. Don't tell me you've never heard of Fosteringham's famous finite mixtures. Fosteringham's famous finite... Guaranteeing final and instant fatality for all household pests. I can't say that I have. Well, there you are, then. Wallworm. Don't bother to see me out. If you'll take my advice, sir, you'll have it attended to at once. A handbag? You stay here. I'll take a look upstairs. We mustn't trespass further, Harper. We mustn't let opportunity slip past us either, Sarah. Not if we're ever to get those little mannequins in our grasp. The old goat's busy in this studio. There's nobody else about. I won't be more than a moment. <laughs> Quiet! Quick! Oh, Daisy, you ain't so much as to bring a word to me. I wouldn't dream of telling anybody, Oh, you? not the master? Not cook, not anyone. It'll be our secret, Millie, just us three. Cross your heart, slit your throats and hope to die. Cross our heart, slit our throats, throats and hope to die. Oh, fair enough, kids, I'll believe you. Now, here's what we'll do. We'll get together, we'll go up to the municipal museum. You may have been to the museum before, have you? Oh, yeah. Oh. Ah, uh, Mr. Fotheringham, isn't it? Um, uh, Fosteringham. Oh, uh, well, Fosteringham, of course. Yes. yes. Um, you're, you're, you're waiting for a sitting. Who? Oh. No? No, you've just, you've just had a sitting. Oh. Yeah. Charming children. Oh. My mistake. What, uh, what are you waiting for? Sudden shot. Ah, bad weather. Never could rely on that contraption. Little pass. Ah. Ah. Charming children. 
I think it might be best if Broker and I were to make up the Lilliputian National Skittle team. You can be the official scorer. <gasps> Someone's coming! Hey, come on. You can come out, all of you. It's only us. Oh. Um, where's Fistrum? Fistrum! Those clothes were all clean on this morning. Uh, I only washed a strawberry jam out of them last night. It wasn't my fault they were covered with strawberry jam. Oh, I, I don't enjoy diving into jam pots. I dived into the strawberry jam for the very same reason I jumped into the paint box. If you two would learn to knock before you enter rooms, I wouldn't need to spend my life diving and jumping into anything. If you had learned to leave other people's things alone and stay in the doll's house. And look at my painting book. Who's done that? What? Which one of you's painted that mushroom red? You again. I might have known it was you. And you've gone over the line three times. Three times? Oh, I, 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 I thought it was only twice. Three times. There, there and there oh, as well. Oh, that one wasn't me. <laughs> it was you two. Well, we haven't got time for all that now. Get him some clean clothes, Emily. We've more important things to do. Precisely so, young man. Very important things that must be done and said. <clears throat> I spell Bush Freelock. Seagoing captain and captain to a all sporting endeavour. Do oh, hear... do get on with it, spell Bush. I am getting on with it, if you will kindly refrain from interrupting me. <clears throat> I spell Bush Freelock, seagoing captain and captain to a all sporting endeavour. Do hereby... Throw down the gold. Just a minute, Spellbush. Can't you find him anything, Emily? Everything is goss in the wash. You can't keep anything clean. There's only these gollywogs clothes left. And I'm not wearing those. Yes, you are, Fistrum. You'll do as you're told. What? You're wearing these, you'll spend all day wrapped in a face flannel. Spell Take off those things you've dirtied. Now, this instant. I... I'll undress Golly. I'm not disrobing in front of you, miss. Why ever not? But I... Good heavens, I've dressed and undressed dolls a million zillion times before. I'm not a doll, and you're not undressing me. Oh, give me a screen. Oh, give him a screen, someone, otherwise we'll be here all day. How's that? Thank you. Give me the monster's clothes. Undress it yourself. Right. Getting back to the important matter at hand. <clears throat> I spell Bush Freelock seagoing captain and captain to a all sportsman like endeavour. Do hereby throw down the gauntlet, etc., etc. What gauntlet? I can't see a gauntlet. I, I'm speaking figuratively, little girl. There isn't an actual bony Fido gauntlet. Do you mean you haven't got one? Uh, not in so many words, no. How can you throw it down then if it doesn't exist? It's a figure of speech. Do hereby throw down the gauntlet, etc., etc. Oh, Spellbush, do come to the point and stop, etc., etc. Right, right. Putting it in a plump stone, we Lilliputians, oh, that is, Broker and myself, are issuing a challenge. Hey, what challenge? Who are you challenging? What are you challenging them to? We're challenging the pair of you, of course, to an international table skittles contest to be fought here, today, under international rules. Venue, nursery tabletop. The winners to be declared international. Not today, contest. Spellbush. We haven't got time for playing games. Playing games? We're going out with Millie. She's taking us to the museum. The museum? Playing games? I'm not talking about playing games. We're going there for a special reason. This is an official Bony Fido International Sporting Competition. It's Millie's secret. I love secrets. Can we come too? We are none of us going anywhere. Not until someone formally and officially picks up the gauntlet that I have officially and formally thrown down. Oh, oh shut, shut up, up Spellbush. <laughs> I look totally and utterly ridiculous. Oh, I don't know, Fistra. I think it quite suits you. What do you think, Spellbush? I think it looks better on you, Fistrum, than it did on the Wally Gog. Do cheer up, Fistrum, or we won't take you to the museum. You don't for one second imagine that I'd go anywhere dressed like this. We're going to a tea shop, too. For tea. Hot toasted tea cakes and lots of buns. It's to be a treat. Millie's going to pay for it. 
Um, do you really think it suits me? Yes, I do, Fistram. I do so enjoy a treat. But the uh, reason that we're going there has got to be a secret. Oh, what is the reason? I've just told you it's a secret. You'll find out soon enough, anyway. We've promised Millie we won't tell anyone. And you three must swear to keep it a secret, too. Oh, I, Spellbush Freelock, confidant of emperors, acknowledged soul of discretion, an avowed master of intrigue, do hereby swear upon my very life that that which is about to be revealed to oh, me really, will Spellbush, never Oh, really, Spellbush, we don't need all this. I mean, we can't do anything else but keep it a secret. We only ever speak to these two. That's true, Spellbush. <laughs> This is Granada Plus. Yes, I heard it as plain as day while I was upstairs. I was downstairs trying to control those unruly urchins you'd hired for the morning. Yes, but wasn't it worth it, though, Sarah, for the knowledge we've gained? With my own ears, I heard that housemaid talking to the brats about a secret. What, Millie Lottersby? <laughs> That's Slatten. Well, Slatten she may be, sister. I wouldn't argue with you over that. Yes, Slatten, and avaricious Slatten to boot, and I shall prove it to you shortly. But what sort of secret do you imagine they were talking about? I know not, Harwell. Unless it be the secret of how to swindle a day's pay out of an employer without doing a hand's turn at honest toil. It was a secret about the municipal museum. There. I heard that too. The housemaid's taking the brats there this very afternoon. Now, there's another riddle you may care to ponder upon. What business would the housemaid and the brats have at the Municipal Museum? I cannot imagine, Harwell, unless it be the brats' intention to put Millie Lottersby on public display in her own glass case as a classic example of lackadaisical idleness and ineptitude. Be serious, Sarah, I beg of you when we are that close to achieving our ultimate goal. Aye, and that close to the madhouse too, I'll warrant. Oh, confound it, Sarah. Will you refuse to see the truth even when it stares you in the face? Consider the facts. One, we know the housemaid and the brats have a secret. Two... You don't know what that secret is. No, but we do know that it concerns the Municipal Museum. Now, putting those two facts together, isn't the solution crystal clear? Well, to your devious mind, Harwell, perhaps, but I take after Mother. The mannequins are the secret, Sarah. The housemaid must have learned of their existence. She probably came across them while she was at work. Oh, the brats must have put them under the carpet, then. She'd have found them when she was lifting it to hide the dirt. Frivolity does not become you, sister. The housekeeper will have told the brats about the mannequin's true value. Now, she'll want her share of the spoils, make no mistake about that. It always was a greedy, grasping, flibberty gibbet. Yes, but we shall foil her yet, Sarah. Hurry, there's no time to lose. We must alter our attire. Oh, no. Where are we going? Is nothing clear to you today, Sarah? The Municipal Museum. Where else? fully an hour, and I failed to see them making representations to anyone in authority. I doubt they have the creatures with them. Oh, they have them, Sarah. Make no mistake about that. They have those cunning creatures inside that box, or I'm a Dutchman. But you are a Dutchman. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm dressed as a Dutchman, Sarah, yes, but I'm not a Dutchman. Well, then why did you say you were? It's a figure of speech, Sarah, that they are in that box. And the longer those brats tarry before seeing anyone, the greater my chances of getting my hands on the contents. Last time you get your hands on the contents of that box, Harbel, and do please correct me if I'm wrong, they proved to be nothing more valuable than wet kelp. That wet kelp was a red herring. And this time they're using that box in earnest, and I must needs find some way of separating brats and fox. Look out. Billy Tufnell, you fair had me worried stiff. 
I was sure you was never going to get here. Oh, better late than not at all, Mill. Hello there, nippers. <coughs> you blundering numbskull, Harwell. It's that lovesick soldier. The one we were forced to share the railway compartment with. There's your precious secret unravelled. The slavey had arranged a meeting with her mooncalf paramour. So? If that be the case, then fate has seen fit to deal us a winning hand at last. How does your adult mind come to that conclusion, Harwell? While the trysting trooper and the smitten slavey whisper sweet nothings to each other, I shall snatch an opportunity and separate the brats from the box. Well, how do you propose to do that, Harwell, without the brats crying for help? <laughs> I'm working on that, Sarah. I'm thinking about it. Harwell, is it? Harwell mincing? Is it? Rudkin Crumble. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Top bunk, cell 15A block, Pentonville Prison, 1898. <laughs> I was prison visiting at the time, Sarah. I'd never have known you, Radkin. Last time we met, you didn't know that moustache. And you were clean-shaven. I still am. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> Birds of a feather. Well, what are you doing here, Radkin? Oh, these are hard times for the criminal classes, I will. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I'm down to honest employment. Uh, but only until something underhand turns up. Not only a winning hand, Sarah, but an ace up the sleeve to boot. Well, what are you doing here? Oh, it's just a little private business, Rudkin, nothing of any great importance. Well, you wouldn't care to earn yourself a couple of shillings, would you? Mm. Wouldn't I just? The game is as good as one, Sarah. The quarry is within sight at last. Go out quickly and get something to carry the cunning creatures in. Cunning creatures, Harwell? No. No, 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 no. I said, uh, I said, stunning features on the head of that uh, skeleton there. Just go quickly, Sarah, and be back within the hour with the wherewithal to carry off our precious prize. Precious prize? No. No, I didn't say that, Rudkin. I said impressive size. That, uh... uh Dinos... Dinos... Never mind, Rudkin, old friend. Come on, we have some business to conclude. He's definitely on them, Billy, for certain sure. I mean, there ain't no chance they'll change their minds. Change their minds? Not them. Regiment seals from Liverpool on Thursday's tide. Generals don't change their minds, Millie. He only tells you once and you jumps to it. And here shouts charge, you charge this girl. Orders is orders. Yes, well, they ain't the only ones what's good at giving orders, Billy Taff. No, I can give my orders too. And when I tell you to watch your step in Africa, you'll watch your step. So don't go trying to win any battles on your own. Know what I mean? I'll be all right, Millie. Oh, God help me, Billy Taff. No, I sometimes think you're looking forward to it. And don't go straying off too far, you two. We won't, Millie. Just going up here. Well, don't be too long, then. Spellbush Freelock, and I insist that you open this box at once. What is it now? What is it now? What is it now? I'll tell you what it is, young man. We wish to register an official complaint. Leave mm. this to me, Brelka. It was our understanding that we were to be conveyed here for an instructive, informative, and extensive tour of one of your country's leading museums. The sum total of our sightseeing so far has been inside of this box. So far, it's been a veritable plums toe. I have spent the entire afternoon in absolute squalor, sitting on biscuit crumbs. <laughs> we wish to see something. We desire to be brought face to face with some of the mysteries and marvels of your land. Your pass. Mm -hmm. Two shillings was the price I think we agreed upon. 
Oh, I'll wager there's more than a florin in this for you. There's nothing in it for me, Rudkin, I've already told you that, and I'm merely playing a harmless prank on a friend. Well, and you'll come to my lodgings tonight so that I may have my own things back. Of course we shall change back, don't you? think I wish to remain a municipal lackey? Do you want the money or don't oh, you? I want it. <laughs> but be sure and get your prank played quickly. The museum closes sharp on four. You've only got ten minutes before they lock the doors. Half that will suit my purpose. Hey, oh well, you said a florin. There's only a shilling here. Yeah. You'll get the other one tonight when I get those clothes back. going to be. The sound seen end to it by Christmas. Oh, they say all sorts of things. Christmas indeed. That's what they said last year. Ah, but last year. They didn't have me out there to give them boys what for. I've told you, Billy Tufnell. You mind what I say and keep your head down, do you hear? Museum closes. Five minutes prompt. Oh, now where are them kiddies hidden themselves? Kiddies, miss. You leave this to me. I'll find the little darlings for you. See you, young'un. But the was. The was! Well, it ain't here now, and it's time to shut up shop. It was in here just there, that's where I put it How now. many times must I tell yeah, you? It's time to. Here. What's all the fuss and palaver well, about? This young master seems to have mislaid some sort of box, miss. Oh, that old boot box, was it? I put it down, Millie, over there. Now it's gone. Uh, I reckon as I must have left it somewhere else, miss. Ed's like sieves, the young'uns today. But it didn't, Millie. I put it down over there. It's not here now, you know, Ernie, is it? Oh, well, at least said soon his men didn't know I'm done. I'll have a thorough search of all the oils and vestibules after oh, you've gone. Really? I'll lay my hands on it right enough, and then tomorrow morning you can collect it from our lost property office. How does that sound? It sounds extremely right and proper to me. I don't think you could have it any fairer, kids. It's bound to be here for you tomorrow. It's only an old boot box when it's there. It's not as if anyone's going to come along and steal it. Oh, oh, come on, let's go. Come this gentleman's waiting to lock up. Time and tide, sir. Time and tide. <laughs> you leave everything to me. <laughs> Eureka! Mine at last! If it gaze upon you, little creatures. Gone! But not gone far. You're still in here somewhere and you're coming. Crafty devils! You get to be those rats! Harwell Mincing is not defeated! You hear me, little mannequins? I should find you if it takes all night! I shall secrete myself for now. And later, when everyone else has gone and the doors are locked, and it's just you and me, the hunted, and the hunter. Beware. Spellbush. Do you call this safe? In here. Gossip, tittle-tattle, arguments, romance and intrigue. Add several pints of Newton and Ridley and that's a sure recipe for classic Coronation Street next here on Granada Plus.